nothing changed my life more than than realizing that Colonel Sanders was real <laughs> and has just such a compelling life story. It like really is the story of America is Colonel Sanders. Uh, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to give just a very like brief overview of the jobs that uh, Colonel Sanders has had. In uh, in 1903, he uh, dropped out of sixth grade because he didn't understand algebra. <laughs> it's like, I don't get it. I'm leaving. <laughs> when he was 14, he lied about his age and joined the army. <laughs> Wait, when he was 14? And got stationed in Cuba, which was like, this is like, I think, six years after the Spanish-American War went down there. He was discharged because of his motion sickness. He worked for a railway also fired from that because of his motion sickness. He worked at another train, uh, also fired for that. Maybe, okay, he's kind of just stupid. Okay, Not like, gonna lie. Stop getting jobs that you move on. He likes trains, but he just can't be near them. That's um, sad. And then started studying law through letters. He would, like, just get things mailed to him. <laughs> and eventually that <laughs> that got him a degree. Nice. Um, started practicing law in Little Rock, Arkansas. Did that for three years. Uh, was able. He like basically lived in every state that used to be in the Confederacy. <laughs> oh no. Yes, and He's then probably he- probably really racist. His, his legal career ended after a courtroom brawl with his own client. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking... threw a chair at him. He <laughs> got another fucking railroad job. Uh, and then he started selling life insurance. In 1922, he became the secretary, uh, secretary at the Chamber of Commerce in Indiana. He's worked for the state. He he admitted that he was not very good at the job and resigned within one year. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, start a lamp company. <laughs> and okay. uh, the year after that, the electric lamp was uh, introduced to the mass market uh, and caused caused his company to fail. <laughs> so he moved to Kentucky and worked for a tire company as a salesman. <laughs> he lost his job in 1924 when the plant closed. So I think we're at like 10 or so. He met the general manager of Standard Oil of Kentucky, who asked him to open a gas station. Hmm. Five years later, the gas station closed down because of the Great Depression. <laughs> Shortly after that, uh, Shell Oil offered him uh, another gas station in North Corbin, uh, North Corbin, Kentucky, free of rent, in return for a small percentage of the sales. So that was where the first chicken that he sold was, and it, it was at that gas station that he got involved in in a shootout uh, because he. <laughs> Before, what? like, they really had billboards, they would make advertisements, they would paint murals on the sides of barns, and he okay. painted uh, a mural for his gas station on the side of uh, somebody's barn that <laughs> that didn't want it there. So when that guy took his mural down, Sanders and, like, two Shell employees rolled up with pistols on them. <laughs> oh my god. And one of the Shell employees got shot and died. Oh my God. Colonel oh Sanders my. shot the barn guy in the arm. Um, and I guess this settled their dispute. <laughs> that way. They were going too far after a man died. He franchised his first KFC uh, in Salt Lake, Utah in 1952. That's not okay. Not even in Kentucky. It's the story of KFC. It eventually got bought out by a few different things. Um... So he was born in 1890, oh. and he died in 1980. So he was like exactly 90 years old. And he was buried in Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, at least he's buried in Kentucky, all right. Yeah, we should have. Uh, I should have gone there when I was in Louisville. Should have visited Colonel Sanders' grave. He's a personal hero of mine. He he represents the American dream, uh, <laughs> which is just like fucking up at everything you do. But, but being uh, a white, straight male, so you get unlimited <laughs> chances. 